Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, and we are beginning a very exciting series on Cameron Champ's swing. It's not going to be a generalized uh, analysis. We're going to we're going to go through several stages here and really dissect, you know, all of the amazing things that happen in this guy's swing. I tell you, we uh, we were watching the tournament this weekend, and I, I've never heard. You know, the commentators be so excited about somebody's swing and technical ability. Just phenomenal. And uh, you look at that last drive he hit, 369 yards, coming in with an 8-iron from 197. It's just phenomenal. And I've, I've got those new blueprint irons that he has too. And I've dropped one club. My 8-iron is my 165 club. And he's just hitting eight iron like 200 yards. It's unbelievable. And it, and it looks so effortless. So to begin, we're going to look at grip, posture, and the distance that he has from the ball. And you will see that it, it, it exemplifies everything we teach. I mean, wisdom in golf. For those of you who are subscribed to us and who are on a premium channel, have been following us for the last 14 years on YouTube, we have our poster boy. Thanks to Sean Foley. Appreciate that, Sean. And uh, thanks to Cameron. Man, I, you know, I want, I want to promote, I want juniors to look at your swing and really emulate what you're doing. And Johnny Miller is spot on. He knows talent when he sees it. And he sees it in you. And, um, you know, we want, to, we want to celebrate what you do and uh, we want to be your, your number one fan club, okay? So officially, Wisdom in Golf is Cameron Champ's number one fan club. How about that? Some Canadian blood, okay? So enough gushing. <laughs> we want to start with grip. And then uh, you'll notice I'd, I've done a video on Cameron Champ's grip before. And I want you to go revisit that. I've done, you know, some incredible videos on grip. I want you to look at uh, best video on grip ever. And uh, I'll put the links in the description there so we don't have to go into the grip because I've done it uh, uh, brilliantly on, and on several occasions, including on the premium channel, so we don't have to go any further. There haven't been any, any more developments apart from the fact that I am now back to an interlocking grip after 40, 45 years. Can you believe it? That's crazy. Um, I started out as a junior with an interlocking grip and uh, used to slice the ball like crazy because I was, I was doing it improperly and going all the way in and then I had to put my, stick my thumb on top and there was just no way of getting leverage there. So as soon as I went to overlap, I immediately starting, started drawing the ball beautifully. And so I groomed my, my techniques around that overlapping grip. And now finally, I'm back to an interlocking grip with a mid-size grip. And uh, I, just, I just love the way that feels. And it's just like, uh, you know, finding, finding home again. So where I want you to look at is posture and distance to ball. So Cameron's posture, as you can see in the split screen here, is dynamically set, beautiful knee flex. You can see that his, his glutes and his quads are engaged. He looks supremely balanced over the ball, center gravity through the hips, knees, and ankles, the arches of his feet secure to the ground. And you'll notice that his distance to ball from wedge to driver is spot on. Why is that? And you notice, I put that, um, that little tape on the bottom there. Uh, get some, for those of you who don't see the blur of the club at the bottom and you need a, a really important reference, distance to ball is spot on on that. So let me put this down for now. So if I swing back and through without stopping, you'll notice I'm just cutting grass in both directions. And notice how the club is brushing the grass in the same place all the time. Many of you, you know, are having trouble with that, so go see my perpetual motion drill and uh, see another video of mine called Toss Versus Place, Sean Clement. And I redo that perpetual motion drill in there for you so you can, you can consistently cut the grass in the same place. 
and then you realize, wow, that's where the club should be. So notice the distance my hands are from the body with the wedge. So if I were to do the same thing with the driver, let me get this out of the way. So if I swing back and through without stopping with the driver, see the, the white blur? That's where the ball should be. So notice my hands are further away from my body than they normally would be with a wedge. So you're basically here with the driver, a little narrower, and here with the wedge. So wedge, seven iron, five iron, fairway wood, driver. So you can't have your hands the same distance between your, you know, your, your body and the ball because as the club gets longer, G-forces are gonna pull those hands away from you and that's gonna naturally flatten that plane. So a good way to understand this, if I get my little lunge whip. So here's a shorter club with a shorter shaft. Notice it's, it can swing naturally more vertically. Well, this is gonna be very difficult to swing vertically unless I grow some legs or stand on a very tall stool. Otherwise, it has to swing a lot more diagonally. So the G, I have to produce the necessary G-force to get that sucker to get pulled out. So what I'm doing with my, with my address position is I am pre-deploying my arms away from the body. If I do it too much, now I'm lunging and reaching for it and I'm losing my balance. If I don't do it enough, and my hands, you know, many of you I can see you're trying to put the hands the same distance between your, you know, to your thighs. And now with the driver, so let's look at the wedge. So if I swing back and through without stopping, with the wedge, hey, that's pretty good. So if I do the same thing with the driver, well, gravity wants to do this now. Now I have to hold on for dear life to not miss the ball. Now in my quest for hanging on, gravity can't take it anymore and I'm significantly impacting the, the club head speed and I'm hanging on to that club head speed and I'm stunting that, that explosion towards the target. So uh, Cameron Champ demonstrate, demonstrates this in spades. And you can see how he's, the width and the stance at address is just spot on. His feet are slightly open. His width is perfect. If you go too wide, then you can't engage that kinetic chain properly and you're gonna have a really hard time shifting weight and clearing the body. If you're too narrow, then it's very easy to start getting outside the feet. So shoulder width apart is, very um, conducive to proper weight shift, proper clearing, and there's a very nice balance with all of the different clubs. So we got a solid grip, and you notice when the grip is in the right place, and this is what the last thing I wanna talk about, if the grip is in the wrong place, I see so many of you trying to keep the club flat to the ground, and so, you can't hold the club properly when you're trying to hold it you know, flat to the ground like that. So you see that little, that little spot there? This is a you know, pretty old glove. That wear spot, you shouldn't have a hole in there. Maybe a little bit of wear is fine. So notice where I'm holding the club is a, you know, where the heel pad is above the grip. So it feels like I can do a nice push up on that right? Or if I'm holding on to a rail, you'll see my, my grip videos on that. So you'll notice that it push, pushes the hands down and brings the toe of the club slightly up off the ground. So this is a proper setup where I can stay over the ball and in, in the proper posture when I'm swinging. If I hold it over here, then all of a sudden I'm, I'm up here trying to hit at a ball instead of swinging through the target, through the ball and towards my target. So I'm looking for a posture that's really over the ball. Have a look at my, um, 
uh, Henrik Stenson drill Sean Clement video. You're going to love that. It's a, another, you know, terrific example of what a posture should be in golf. So these are the fundamentals that you need. You need a really sound grip if you're going to be swinging at, holy cow, 127 miles an hour and having 190 mile per hour ball speed. Can you imagine the compression on that? The engineers have put... Um, you know, sensors for compression, and there's two to 3,000 pounds of pressure per square inch on that club face at impact. And so if your grip isn't sound, there's no way you're gonna be able to compress that ball or keep the ball in play. So that grip's gotta be spot on. And your posture's gotta be super phenomenal to be able to hold all that in place. And you're gonna see in the next videos how amazing Cameron Champ is at holding his posture, at anchoring that swing, Clearing and shifting, it's all there. That's like, it's the perfect human catapult. So I hope you enjoyed these fundamentals. Get those down and prepare yourself because in the next four weeks, we're going to be, you know, giving you all the juicy stuff on his swing and it's going to really help your golf game because that, that's how a human body should do its stuff when it comes to peeling golf balls off the, off the grass and sending them out toward, towards the target. All the best.